we're going to be looking at radioactive transformations. So that is the nuclear equations for alpha, beta and gamma decay. Radioactive atoms have unstable nuclei and these nuclei decay to emit either alpha, beta and or gamma radiation. For a radioactive transformation, the nuclear decay equation, the A and Z numbers are conserved. Z is the proton number, so that is the number of protons inside the nucleus, and A is called the nucleon number. So nucleons are the particles that are inside the nucleus, and the particles are protons and neutrons. So the nucleon number represents the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. And A minus Z will give us then the neutron number, the number of neutrons inside the nucleus. We're first going to be looking at alpha decay. An alpha particle is helium nucleus. So that is, it's made up of two protons and two neutrons. It is not a helium atom because the atom will also have two electrons. Alpha decay occurs when the nucleus is too heavy. It has too many protons and neutrons to be stable. So during alpha decay, the nucleus loses two protons and two neutrons. So for the nuclear equation, we have the parent nucleus that emits an alpha particle. So the alpha particle has two protons, so the Z number is two. And it has four nucleons, two protons and two neutrons. So the nucleon number is four. And so the daughter nucleus Y will have a proton number of Z minus two to conserve the Z number. So Z minus two plus the two will give us our original Z. And the daughter nucleus will have a nucleon number of A minus four, again to conserve the nucleon number. So A minus four plus the four will give us back our original A. So an example of a nucleus undergoing alpha decay is 238 uranium, which will decay to thorium. This graph is showing you the stable isotopes, which are purple. So the isotopes where we have the neutron number against the proton number. And the green are representing the isotopes that undergo alpha decay. So you can see generally it's the heavy nuclei that undergo alpha decay. There are two types of beta decay, beta minus and beta positive. So if we first look at beta minus decay, a beta minus particle is a very fast moving electron or very highly energetic electron. And it occurs because the nucleus is neutron rich, that is, it has too many neutrons than protons to be stable. So, what happens inside the nucleus is that a neutron changes into a proton as well as. An electron, which is our beta minus particle, and an antineutrino. And it's this electron and the antineutrino that are emitted out of the nucleus. So here's the nuclear equation for the transformation. So the Z number for the neutron is zero because it's not a proton, and the A number is one for one nucleon one neutron. For the proton, the Z number is one for one proton, and the A number is one because we have one proton, one 
particle. For the electron or the beta minus particle, the z number is minus one. Because the z number represents the number of protons, it's also that represents the charge number. So the charge of an electron is minus one. And its A number is zero because it's not a nucleon. The Greek symbol nu represents the neutrino and the line above represents it as a anti-neutrino. So an anti-neutrino, the Z number is zero. Neutrino is neutral charge. And the A number is zero because it's not a nucleon. So you can see for this equation, the A and Z numbers are conserved. The A before is equal to one and after equals one. And Z before equals zero and after total equals zero. So the nuclear equation for beta minus decay, we have our parent nucleus decaying to emit a beta minus particle and our antineutrino will give us a daughter nucleus where the proton number will equal z plus one to conserve proton number, the z number. So the z plus one minus one plus zero will give us our original z. And the a number, the nucleon number will remain the same because a plus zero plus zero gives us our original a. So you can see z plus one, we've added a proton inside the nucleus, but the nucleon number has remained the same because we've lost a neutron but gained a proton. So an example of beta minus decay, an isotope would be boron 12. So you can see it has five protons and seven neutrons. So it has more neutrons than protons to be stable. So it will decay to carbon 12. For beta positive decay, a beta positive particle is a fast moving positron or highly energetic positron. And a positron is a positively charged electron. So it's the anti electron. Beta positive decay occurs when the nucleus is proton rich, that is, it has too many protons and neutrons to be stable. So during beta positive decay, a proton inside the nucleus changes into a neutron as well as a positron and a neutrino and the positron which is our beta positive particle and the neutrino are emitted out of the nucleus. So this is representing the equation for the transformation. So the beta positive particle, the positron, will have a Z number of plus one because its charge is plus one. And the nuclear number, the A number is zero because it's not a nucleon. And the neutrino has a Z number of zero because it's neutral and a nuclear number of zero because it's not a nucleon. So again, you can see the A numbers and Z numbers are conserved. So the nuclear equation for beta positive decay, we have again our parent nucleus, which decays to emit our beta positive particle and the neutrino. And the daughter nucleus will have a proton number of Z minus one, again, to conserve the Z number. So the Z minus one plus one 
plus zero will give us our original Z. And the nuclear number will remain the same, A. Again, to conserve nuclear number, so A plus the zero plus the zero gives us our original A. So you can see, because we've got Z minus one, we've lost a proton inside the nucleus. But as the nuclear number has remained the same, we've gained a neutron. An example of an isotope that undergoes beta positive decay is oxygen 14. So you can see it has eight protons, but six neutrons. So it's proton rich. It has two more protons than neutrons. And it will decay to nitrogen 14. This graph is showing you the isotopes undergoing beta minus decay in the orange compared with the stable isotopes in purple. And you can see the beta minus emitting isotopes are above the stable isotopes, indicating that the beta minus emitting isotopes are neutron rich. They have more neutrons than protons to be stable. This graph is showing you the isotopes undergoing beta positive decay in blue compared with the stable isotopes in purple. And you can see that the beta positive emitting isotopes are below the stable isotopes. The beta positive isotopes are proton rich. They have more protons than neutrons to be stable. And finally, gamma decay. Gamma ray is an electromagnetic wave or a photon, a packet of electromagnetic energy. And gamma decay occurs when the nucleus has excess energy, too much energy to be stable. And so the nucleus loses this energy as a photon during gamma decay. So we have our parent nucleus, which is excited. It has too much energy given by the asterisk. And it emits a gamma photon. So the gamma photon has a Z number of zero because it's neutral, has no charge. And the nuclear number is zero because the gamma photon is not a nucleon. And so you can see that the daughter nucleus is the same atom as the parent, but it's lost its energy. So there's no change in the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus for gamma decay. So an example of a isotope that emits gamma radiation would be cobalt 60 